I will probably go to data visualization hell for this, but in this video, I'm teaching you how to create pie charts, donut charts, and then we go even one step further and make this into sunburst plots. All of these chart types are contested for being very bad and evil and you shouldn't use it, but really, don't listen to people who are saying these kind of things. All charts have their purpose, but the problem with pie charts or donut charts is that they are often used in settings where you shouldn't use them. But really, in some scenarios, they are really good. And these are the kinds of scenarios we are using these charts in. And in ggplot, if you want to create this, you will first have to load the tidyverse, and then you have to create your own data set where you put in the categories and the proportions of these categories, and then you save all of that into your new data set. Now, to compute the pie chart, there are two things you need to know. One, a circle has 360 degrees, and two, usually we don't use degrees, but we use pi instead, so one full circle is two pi. So now what you need to do is to take the proportions from your data set and compute the angles yourself. So this means that your first slice will go from angle zero to some angle between zero and two pi, and the next slice will start at that angle and go all the way to the end to two pi. And to compute this, we just take our data set, and then we compute a new column, the first one which we call start column, where we just multiply our proportion by 2 pi, but we have to make sure that our first slice starts at zero. So this is why we need to lag the stuff. So that way we get this data set. And then for the end, we use our proportions, but we have to use the cumulative sum of the proportions and multiply this by 2 pi as well. And now you can see that our first slice goes from zero to 0.628. And our next category goes from the same number to all the way to the end to 2 pi. Now, if you get all of this, congrats, you have the hard math part done. Now we can enjoy plotting. So what you need to do is to just take this new data set and pass it to ggplot. And from there, we use the gmr bar layer. This layer can basically draw curved bar charts. If this sounds confusing, hold on a second. I will first show you the aesthetics and then we can talk about this in more detail. First, you want to specify coordinates of a circle that you want to draw. Your curved bars will move alongside this circle. So this means the center of the circle goes into one coordinate. In this case, it's just the point zero zero. And then you will specify two radius, radii, radiuses, doesn't matter, you will specify two of those. Basically, the first radius corresponds to the left edge of your bar and the second radius to the right edge. This will become more clear once you see the output. And then you have to specify the start and end that we calculated earlier. And then you can map the fill color of your bars to the activity column. And now if you plot this, you get a pie chart like this. Now let me show you what this inner radius does in case it hasn't become clear yet. If I put 0.25 here, you will notice that the left edge of basically my curved bar starts at 0.25 here. So the inner radius really determines how thick my bar is supposed to be. So that's why we set our inner radius to zero so that our pie is complete. Now that this is covered, let's make our chart look good. First off, we want to make sure that it actually looks like a full circle. So this is why we apply chord equal, which makes sure that the aspect ratio of the X to the Y axis is one to one. And while we're in that layer, we can also turn off the expansion and then we can set our axis manually to make sure that our circle is completely inside of our plot. And then we can throw in a couple of design changes on top of that. Let's just go through them quickly because this is not the focus of this video. So really what we do is we first apply a theme void, then we set the base size, we set a nice font family, we put in some labels, and we also modify the legend position, and then we make some nicer colors here. All right, so that's the pie chart. We went through these theme changes quite quickly. I will cover all of this in my upcoming video course. If you're interested in that, check out the link in the description. For now though, let us focus on our pie chart and more specifically on our donut chart next. Really, as you can guess, what we have to do to turn pie into donut is to simply change the inner radius of our pie chart. Maybe we could put it to something like 0.7. And then we could get rid of the title because we're going to throw this into the middle of our donut using an annotation. This means that we're going to add a text annotation where we specify the coordinates to be at the center of our chart. We add the label and then we already have our title in there. All that is left to do is to make the font look good, make it larger, change the line height a little bit and make everything bold. That completes our donut chart. Now let's make this into a sunburst chart instead. This means that we're going to add an additional layer outside of our donut which untangles the green category, which represents the time I spent enjoying my code. What I want to do first is to rotate our donut so that the part that I want to untangle is at the right of our chart. This makes adding text labels later on easier. To rotate our pie chart, we just have to modify our start and end columns inside of our dataset. 
Basically, all that we have to do is to create a new variable, which I call percentage rotation. It will represent how much I want to rotate my circle. So if that value is zero, I will not rotate at all. If that value is one, I will turn by one full circle. So the result will be the same. Here, I only want to rotate by a little bit, so I will rotate by 20%. And the way to rotate now is to just add 20% of two pi on top of our start and end column. That's what we would get then. And while we're at it, we can also compute the length of our donut parts. And we will need this because we'll have to compute new proportions for just the green part later on. So we need to know how large that part is. Now with all of that data, we can save it into a new variable. And then let us compute the new data for the second layer of our donut. So in the first step, I simply filter out the data that we've just computed with respect to which part actually corresponds to the part that I want to untangle. And I save this into a new variable. And from there, I simply extract the start value and the length of that part. So now I just have to basically take my code from before and modify it to the new categories and the new proportions of those categories. And then I have to set my start point to my sunburst start point that I extracted earlier. And now my full length isn't the full circle, but it is just the length of the data that I've extracted earlier. So I modify this part to use only the sunburst length. And that way I have a new data set that I need to save into a variable. And once I have that, I can modify my previous plot. This means that in my previous plot, I just use my new rotated time data set, which will rotate the donut. And then I add a new layer inside of here where my data is coming from my new data set, enjoy time. And because I want to have a second layer here, I need to modify the inner radius to start at one and then the outer radius can go to 0.5. To make this code work, we will have to first remove our fill aesthetic because we only specified two colors before. So right now it shows us the outline of the arcs, but not really a fill color. So let's just for now set this to some color rate 20. And we can see that our chart gets cut off. So this is why we need to modify the X limits to 1.9. This should also be enough to put some more labels to the right of this pie chart, which we will do once we have figured out the color situation of that additional donut slice. For starters, we could use the same green as the one that is referring to, but this is not a good strategy. Maybe it's better if this is actually a lighter color. So let's use the color space package and use its lighten function to lighten our color by 30%. And this looks much better now. So now let us add some more labels in there to highlight which part of the slice correspond to which new category. The final ingredient that we need is another annotation, specifically a text annotation. In there, we are going to set new coordinates and those are just chosen by playing around with the values until I was satisfied with the look of the labels. Of course, this requires that you actually put some labels in there. And once you execute this, you will see that we do have labels there, but we should probably make this into a nicer font. We should change the size. We should change the line height here. We want to make the bold. And finally, to make this look good, we want to have it left aligned and, and we're going to make the color the same as the pie slice that it refers to. Very cool, we have completed our modified donut chart, which is sometimes also called sunburst chart. Regardless of what this chart is called, this concludes our video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, here are some alternatives that you may want to watch. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.